Welcome to Pulling Focus, a podcast about movies and filmmaking brought to you by Skyline Indie Film Fest and thescenesnobs.com in Winchester, Virginia. Here are your hosts, Brian Patrick and Mick Manhattan. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Pulling Focus Podcast. I am your host, Mick Manhattan. I am joined, of course, always by Mr. Brian Patrick from Skyline Indie Film Festival. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing very well, Mick. How's it going with you over there in Scene Snob Land? It's going good. We have a lot of snow on the ground here. Yeah, Virginia, doing? right? Two weeks ago, I was sitting out like in a t-shirt by a fire, having a great evening with my friends. And then two days ago, we were shoveling 12 inches of snow. Virginia, baby. I will say this. I'm very fortunate to be in a place where, even with this year going on, where it snowed and it was like, all right, I don't have to do anything. You know, like, you know, do the manual labor you got to do with snow, but I don't have to go anywhere. Like, you don't have to race off to work or anything like that. Uh, Because I've done the data center job where you live there for (laughs) however many days. Yeah. I've been stuck at the health department overnight before. Uh, Not great. Don't care for that. No, not at all. Let's talk about our 2020, well, mostly your 2020 favorite films. Because I don't remember what I watch. I've, I've got a... Skyline, and I've got up my letterbox account because I literally, unless it was an amazing movie for me, I don't remember what I've watched or when I watched it. That's what do you fair. think? What 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 are some of your 2020 favorites? Well, yeah, I'm gonna go over some because I didn't put them on the list yet. Like I didn't put them all together yet. I know my one and two. I'm still working it out. A lot of them, especially after talking to you, are I want to shine a light on independent filmmaking because of everything they've done for us so far. Mm-hmm. So without a overall and any kind of order, uh, I'll give you some of my favorites now. Okay. Cosmos is my number one. That's excellent. It's still, again, is it perfect? No, but it is such a beautiful, wonderful film. Everything about it is just, you know, is so beautiful for the heart and, you know, and, and just everything that went into it, you know. Yeah, I really truly love that movie, and it does. I think it deserves to be number one on more people's lists. Yeah, it's. I think it's done okay, especially since it landed on Hulu and I maybe Prime. I'm not sure. That movie is so good. Uh, it's just really so good. Those brothers are. Uh, they're they're just killing it, and I don't know what they're working on next, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing it for sure. I can't wait because, yeah, just what they did with Cosmos was terrific. And and for 2020 being what it was, Cosmos is the right 2020 film like that you need to feel good. Mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, um, just the hopefulness of everything and, and just the friendship aspect all night. So like anybody who hasn't seen Cosmos, go watch it now. <laughs> My number two, which is the most 2020 Santa Claus you can get. <laughs> is fat man <laughs> yeah so you I, like you like cosmos more than you like fat man yeah yeah wow. well I, listen i've probably seen fat man more especially in like the last like month like i've watched it like five times it's just <laughs> so good and i i, I, I sw- i'm a mel mark so if mel's in something i'm gonna watch it i don't i understand when we talked about problematic and stuff in the past i get it i understand why people may not like him and I don't care about the man. Like, I I mean, I do to a point, but all that pushed aside, like if he's in a movie, I'm going to watch him because he's just great in all movies that I've seen. Yeah. And as a director, watch Hacksaw Ridge and tell me that, you know, he, he's not a great director. And that's his probably his worst movie that he's directed. <laughs> and it's still better than most movies <laughs> hacksaw ridge is excellent i love i love a good war movie and that's just such a mm-hmm. it's just so intense and like based on based on truth you know well, what do you, let me ask you this because now he's made you can kind of account account apocalypto as a war movie but let's for the sake of this say no you know because there's a lot more to it with that but let's say his three big ones braveheart patriot and, and Hacksaw Ridge. Which one's your favorite Mel War movie? I think the most relatable one would be Hacksaw Ridge. I would go Hacksaw Ridge, Braveheart, and The Patriot. That's how nice. I okay. that's how I would order those. Braveheart was just a spectacle. Those those battle scenes and you know how he portrayed William Wallace and stuff was 
is, is just incredible. And for his first movie, too. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was his first directorial outing. Yeah, it was just when Braveheart came out and, you know, we got it on uh, VHS or whatever. I was stationed in Yuma at the time and we just watched it constantly. It was great. Loved it. Nice. Yeah. And I wanted your perspective, especially as a Marine, just to, like kind of see what you think. Like, I love I think my favorite is The Patriot. Mm. I can watch that over and over again. I think it's just the performances and the characters of it. Yeah. I love him as the ghost, just hacking at people. It's it's amazing. Just because it's my favorite, I am by no means defending it as the best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I just, with Fat Man, I just, it, there's so much heart to that movie. And she's the best. Marie, Marianne uh, John Baptiste is uh, the best Mrs. Claus, in my opinion. Yeah, Ooh, she was oh, awesome. I love when she pops up in, in things. And I just go, I just, I already like this movie, even if I only like it for her scenes, because she is amazing. Oh, so fantastic. I mean, I do she have. Ends up, she ends up being pretty badass in that as well. Yeah, she, oh, man, she gets shot and then still takes him out. Yeah. But she, you can tell she leads. That's her roost. Like <laughs> that Santa is kind of like, all right, yeah, I'll do whatever you say, because you, you're the smart <laughs> one. Um, and I don't blame him. Mm. Um so like a lot of these movies that I put on my list, again, these are, those were the only order that I had right now, but the rest are ones that I like shining a light on, or there's some aspect of it, especially in filmmaking. I really like the invisible man is on there. I know that's a studio film, but it was so well done. It's just a really well done movie. That's the only studio film I have. Well, made by a studio. The rest are all, I think purchased. Um, Oh no, Christmas Chronicles 2 is on the list. I liked it. I just really liked that movie. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Another badass Santa. Loser. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, listen, I'm not I'm not as big of a Christmas head as you. Um, so I I, I got I, I tuned in when you had the fat Santa brothers on and Blaine, and Blaine was just gushing over elf ears. And I was like, what have I stepped into right now? <laughs> It was so much fun. Uh, we had a good time with that one because we played a game at the beginning of it. Um, who, uh, who would survive a horror movie the longest? Mm-hmm. And it was the podcasters versus the filmmakers. And uh, I mean, of course, the filmmakers won. I was the judge. They were going to win from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> they actually made the right choices. So I was like, okay, good. They made the right choices. Nice. <laughs> um, another one that was backed by a studio, but uh, is still an indie film. It's on that cusp is The King of Staten Island. It was so good. Really good. I I went into that wanting to not like it because Pete Davidson dated Kate Beckinsale for a while, and I'm supposed to be dating her, <laughs> so I had to hate him for a little bit. <laughs> Did they, for that guy to go from Ariana Grande to like to a month later dating Kate Beckinsale, and you're just like, yeah, all right. What what is with you, dude? You haven't. I was mad at her. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> Oh, she still looks so amazing. Yeah. Um, good her, Insta- her Instagram feed is a lot of fun too. All she, right. She I, she identifies, she she recognizes the absurdity of being a movie star, like when people are waxing your ass and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Yep, here it is. This is great, right? Oh, so geez. so luxurious." <laughs> she's just always great. Palm Springs is another one that was bought by the studio, but it was an indie. That's on my list. That was such a good movie. Yeah. A lot of Paul fun. This is good. Did you see Troop Zero? No, I want to. I liked it. I thought it was really cute. I had a lot of fun with that one. That young actress, McKenna Grace, I think we've talked about her before. Mm-hmm. She's just it's so she's just so cute. <laughs> she is adorable. <laughs> and and that character just she just wants to be a birdie scout. And, and, and she's her. the one she plays like because uh what's her name from who played the daughter of Mad Men plays Sabrina on that new Sabrina show. Yeah. But when they do flashbacks, it's McKenna Grace. Mm. And they look so uh Kira Shipnap or so, shipping or something like that. Okay. We really think I don't know. I'm probably screwing that up big time. Um, probably. <laughs> uh but McKenna Grace, they look so much alike. So like when it cuts back, it's like, how are you doing this? <laughs> They did. They did the de aging better on uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch than they did in The Irishman. 
That's yeah, all right. <laughs> well, I'll go down the list real quick and I want to know what you think. I named some of them, but like the rest are the rest I have right now because I'm going to do a top 20 of, of 2020 list. Um, but so far, I have The Quarry, which I thought was really good. I really enjoyed that movie. And then it's done by the same filmmakers who did To the Stars. Now, To the Stars, I didn't love the story. It wasn't terrible, but I loved the cinematography of it. That cinematography blew me away. I thought it was just fantastic. I'm with that. Freeland made my list because of the cinematography. I just really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed uh, Krisha in it. Yeah. You know, she did such a great job. Like the story overall was like simple. So I'm not. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to yeah. reveal there. It just sort of demonstrated this, the struggle of a, of an alternative yeah. industrial lifestyle, an alternative agricultural life, lifestyle or whatever. And if you don't know, Freeland is about a, a, a an aging hippie up in the California mountains who used to grow weed uh, illegally, but then the illegal, the, the, the growing marijuana became legal and she didn't get her permits and stuff. So she got kind of forced out of, of, yeah. of the community in, in some regards. Yeah. I, I, I'm at that point where for me, it's, it's almost like if you think about fat man, the, the plot of fat man, like just how the business is kind of tearing apart this older business owner. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's some parallels there. there. And um, so, like, it, it just like, but if they took it, they took the movie of, with Fat Man and made it more interesting. <laughs> but I, what I like about Freeland is cinematography is beautiful. They really show, what was it, Washington, Oregon, they shot that. I, you just, thought, it, I thought it was Northern California, but I'm not sure. Oh, Northern that. California. Uh, you're right. I mean, I, want, I, <laughs> I watched it through you uh, and, and Skyline. There was another one you showed. I can't remember the name of it. The zombie mockumentary. That's on my list. I, I was trying to find the name. But... <laughs> yeah, hang on. I can find it for you. It was so good. And I wanted to shine a light on that one too. Um, but to kind of go down the list while you're looking for that. Uh, yeah. So I did the quarry to the stars. Um, Freelands. The wolf of snow hollow. Again, yeah. the story wasn't fantastic, but the acting in it was great. And the cinematography was great. I just said the design of the wolf costume in that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I think the zombie mockumentary was called uh, What Doesn't Kill Us. What Doesn't Kill Us. That's right. Okay. So yeah. if anybody hasn't watched that, you should watch it. So that's three films from Skyline this year that are on my list. So yep. thank you, sir. Um <laughs> Well, I could I could go down my skyline favorites. Uh, Freeland for sure. Uprooted the story of jazz dance. The history of jazz dance is a that's the other one I went to put on my list. Sorry, I'm going to put it on there now. It's a great documentary about uh, the history of jazz dance and where jazz dance came from. And one of my good friends is a, a professional jazz dancer. He's been on Broadway, and he brought that to my attention. And I was like, if they want to put this in the festival, that's a go. And it ended up winning like fan favorite and winning the festival. So it was so good. That I meant to put that on my list, and I, I completely forgot. So it's funny because it's I didn't set out to make this list and say, okay, everything from Skyline is going to be on there. It's just is ending up that way again because I want to shine a light also on a lot more indie because there was really no great studio movies that came out. Yeah, The Invisible Man was pretty great, but again, like, I did like The Invisible Man, and I need to watch it again. Just the way they the way they had to film that, you know, with the cat in the green suit and Elizabeth Moth acting her ass off to a freaking Muppet basically <laughs> in, in real life, you know, to, so that we couldn't see it later. It's just, she's, she's just a great, great actress. She really is yeah. one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. So my list is, my list is pretty like bad education with Hugh Jackman. That was a good one. Mm. That was an HBO movie, but uh, it was, they were a really good job with that one. Yeah. Uh, Spaceship Earth, which is a great doc. Yeah. Did you see The Speed of Time at Skyline? Yes. I, oh, man, I'm going to add another one. <laughs> Speed of Time is so good. That, that movie was so goddamn funny to me. I just yeah. loved it. I loved it completely. I just talked about that on the Scene Sons podcast this week. Oh, yeah? Because we were talking about we were talking about indie movies. Uh, and I think I was talking about The Listen. I think it might have been one that I wanted to put on. Uh, I was compiling, so I was like, you know, we're and we're both wrestling fans, so we know who John Morrison and Dolph Ziggler are. Right. 
Uh, so I was like, dude, you got to see this movie. And I was like, it's so well done and it's funny and everything else. It's so good. <laughs> it's, I just added it to the list to compile because <laughs> it's, it's such a well done movie. I'm, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna throw a horror movie out there, and it's I, I'm pretty sure it was a studio movie, but it's called Underwater. Kristen Stewart. Oh. You didn't oh. like it, or you don't like her? I don't like her, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't like it either. Like, because one of the hosts of Beyond, one of the former hosts of Behind the Box, gushed over that movie all year. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a gusher. It's not a gusher. <laughs> uh, gushed over is like it belongs on every list. And uh, I, I watched it and I'm like, this is not good in my opinion. <laughs> um, well, I, I thought it was very good, but I don't know if it deserves to be on, you know, like major top 10 lists or anything like that. But I don't know. It's claustrophobic. It's underwater. Uh, uh, oh God, who's the comedian with the curly hair? Which one? <laughs> Silicon, Silicon Valley, Cloverfield. Uh, you're killing T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller, he gets killed, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, oh, you know, <laughs> in the pantheon of T.J. Miller movies where he gets killed, uh, I was watching. Um, I, I rewatched all the Transformers movies with my eight-year-old, not by choice, by his choice, not my choice. And I, I, I was like, right, here's what I'm going to do: I'm going to rewatch them all with them anyway, because I've only ever seen them all once, and that was in theaters, and I did not care about them. So I was like, let me rewatch them and see if there's some kind of, in these five movies, a storyline that makes sense. There's not. There isn't. The next movie always just cherry picks the things from the previous movie it wants in that one. Mm. And it's ridiculous. And it does not have a through line. It, it makes no sense. None of them. You mean it's not about family? Listen, listen, you can <laughs> knock Transformers all you want. You leave the Toretto's alone, all right? Um, <laughs> I would have added F9 to my list this year, but it got pushed back. Oh, boo <laughs> No, rewatching all of them because as soon as we finished the last one, because uh, Bumblebee was actually pretty good. I liked Bumblebee, but it takes place before all of this crap. And it literally was another director. So it actually made one, another writer. So it actually made sense. Not with the other movies, but you know, what else? So anyway, TJ Miller. Yeah, he was in the Age of Extinction movie, and at one point they blow up something, and like this lava is like going. So they all have to get away from the lava that's crawling at them. And Mark Wahlberg makes it, and the other stars in the movie make it, but T.J. Miller doesn't make it. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I was like, I don't remember it, and I'm just like, did they just kill T.J. Miller, <laughs> Cameron? I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I've never spent any time around him, I, which you know might seem obvious, but I just ain't no no flipping way, no way would I spend time around that guy. He's, I I think maybe in my twenties I would have. Mm. I, I could take somebody who is that much at that time. I can't take anybody that much at that time now. I mean, I hosted a show on Fridays now with two people who are very much younger than me. And I'm kind of like, this is a lot <laughs> um, because it's all our viewers are younger stuff, too. And they're talking and I'm just like, I remember what this was like. I'm definitely the old man of this show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the old man everywhere I go now. So <laughs> you can get you the goatee like that comes down to here. And it's just like you really live out the marine lifestyle of like, you know, just a veteran. So yeah. something that I saw in 2020, but came out before 2018, I think I saw Prospect, like in October or so. Which one was Prospect? Because uh, sounds familiar. Prospect. I can't remember. Pedro it's, Pascal. Yeah, this okay. this guy and his daughter go to get something they've left on the planet that they're visiting or the moon or whatever. And I don't remember if it was like industrial, they're like mining or something like that. But they're bandits down there, and the, you know, of course, their starship or whatever is going to leave the area and they forgot something they got to go back and it's a dad and daughter there's no mom in the picture and so there's conflict there mm -hmm. and then they meet bad guys on their way to their their old mind their old uh claim or whatever and uh the dad gets killed and then you know there's only one air filter and because the, they have to be in their um uh space gear all the time or whatever and we know there's only one air filter they're sharing air filters and stuff and then they meet other bad guys who want to like buy the little girl from the one bad guy Jesus. and 
Yeah. And they did, they shot it all, you know, not on another planet, but <laughs> it looks great. And it's just a good heartfelt story. It's called Prospect. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm fairly certain at this point that I have figured out not just indie movies, but movies in general. It's mostly indie though. When you have a father and if it's a father and a daughter movie and they're not driving to college, the father's probably going to die. <laughs> Movies like that, like there's a movie that came out a few years ago called Cargo. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I, I'm not going to talk about it because I'm going to get misty eyed. It just <laughs> it screws you up, man. Stuff yeah. like that. Like, I, I don't know if I can handle it anymore. Not that they're not good. I just can't handle it anymore. Yeah. We had that short film, the short version of that at Skyline. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Martin Freeman starred in the feature obviously no not doing it can't do it can't do it i can't i can't talk about it or i'm gonna lose it it's so <laughs> sad you know when my wife was pregnant she was like there's only one movie i want to watch it's just that movie you know that like emotionally i can deal with we watched she wanted to watch she's having a baby the uh, kevin bacon and it's was, it was a john hughes movie from uh the 80s uh where kevin bacon and his wife i forget who played her in the movie yeah so it was elizabeth mcgovern and kevin bacon so yeah john hughes directed it he wrote and directed it and it's about she's pregnant she's having a baby and it's kind of like how their lives are changing getting to like him becoming a father and like her just being pregnant and such through it it's a good movie you should check it out if you haven't um i could not watch it when she was pregnant because there's a scene in it like a pretty fairly big scene it's a big plot point in the movie um, where she's having complications and you don't know if she and or the baby are going to make it. I was like, I cannot watch this while you're pregnant. I can't. And I have not watched it since, but I've seen it quite a few times beforehand because I'm a John mm-hmm. Hughes guy. So like I watch all of this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this. And she was like, I really want to watch it. You know, it's, it's a touching tale and I don't mind spoiling movies that are older, but I won't tell you until you see it. But like, you know, it ends. <laughs> you know, there's an ending to it. Um, Wait a minute. The movie ends? Yeah, That's I'm going to let you figure shit. out how. <laughs> so it's not the never ending story. Um, so, yeah, so like I couldn't watch it. And then I was like, you know, I'll watch another movie about because at the time I wanted a daughter when she was pregnant. So I was like, all right, you know, let's watch Jersey Girl because like it's like a dad and, you know, a daughter thing. And I want to get into it first five minutes when she like dies. I was like, no, I can't do this. I was like, you're pregnant. It's killing me. (laughs) So like, we're such movie guys. Like, actually, that's a, that's a good point. I want to ask you your feelings on it. Being a movie guy, what are some things that emotionally just get to you movie wise that you're like, I don't know if I can handle this. Um, There's not a lot that like will dissuade me from watching something, but, I, I cry readily at movies more so than music or books or mm-hmm. or anything. Movies really – guess I allow them to get to me. I, I get vested really hard, even in some pretty bad movies. So anytime there's like some self-sacrifice going on. So like that's the only good part for me about a superhero movie is this is like someone saves someone else mm-hmm. self, selflessly. And, and in a superhero movie, there's no consequences because they're a fucking superhero. But <laughs> – in other movies, you know, like The Greatest Showman. I love that movie. I I always I, – I did cry, like outright cry, not like ugly cry, but like tears on my cheeks rolling down, not just water in my eyes type of thing. Every time he runs into the burning circus to get the Zac Efron character, mm-hmm. you know, it just, it yeah. just gets me. It was like that, that idea of self-sacrifice really, you know, hits me in the heart. Because you don't have to do that. Like no one has to do that. And people do it in real life every single day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I've seen it. Hero. Yeah. Um, outside yeah. of that, um, <laughs> kids, kids getting hurt, kids getting in danger is like that's that gets hard to watch, you know. Um, yeah. Even something like The Walking Dead when the mom was pregnant with the baby, you know, season one and two or whatever, two, I yeah. guess. And I was just like, oh, my God, how are they going to do this? Yeah. Stuff like that. Like, you know, horror movies, not so much because it's usually pretty campy or pretty uh, sl- – sl- it's, it's a slasher film. Like, bad stuff happens. But, you know, like a Serbian film, have you seen that? 
nope nope and i never ever will <laughs> yeah one time that's a one-time watch for me i don't need how to did see you that pull again. that one off man i couldn't even imagine not turning it off i i knew nothing about it and i was like well this comes in hot and then that part happens and i'm just like oh my god how did they even make this movie <laughs> yeah I, I you know it's crazy I knew the filmmakers back when we were doing uh, um, the Mary Likes movies and he was friends with the filmmakers online. And then we finally got a chance to all get together because they were pushing the movie at a convention and we were hanging out and we were talking about it and they were talking about the scene. I mean, there's a lot of hard stuff in that movie, but that scene, I was just that's, like, that's, that's over the top. I looked right at him and I was like, I'll never watch your fucking movie. <laughs> And I and I never have, and I will never glorify it. I will never push it. I will never tell anybody to watch it. I was like, yeah. that's too much. Yeah, um, that that's too much. Other stuff that like really gets to me is like when a man loves a woman. Have you seen that? Andy Garcia and Meg oh, Ryan. Yeah. She's an alcoholic and like leaves her kid in a bar. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, and just just seeing that absolute hit in the bottom of your life. And with due to a disease or a disorder or something like that, that really, that really plow through my emotions as well, because there's, there's anger, there's recognition, there's sadness, you know, there's despair, there's maybe a little bit of hope, you know, and it's just like fucking like emotional salad up in my brain. That literally does not bother me because I was that kid <laughs> who's been left in the bars by my dad. And, you know, it was kind of like, all right, well, at least I know, like, my granddad's right there, you know, or my uncle's going to walk in any minute because his shift is going to end. Yeah. And I'll just play darts while my dad goes off and does whatever he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> they come back and get me. I've, I've had some experience with that, too, uh, as, as the kid, not the not the adult yeah. leaving. I've never left my kid anywhere. <laughs> I don't even I, – I've reached a point, like, I was like, I'm never even bringing my kid into a bar. Yeah. You know, like when we're adults and like maybe to share a beer or something, but they'll never know that lifestyle after having lived that way. Yeah. I mean, but stuff like that, when it comes to movies, like, like it's gotta be in danger, you know, like for it's got, it's I, father stuff. We've talked about this before. Father stuff gets me. Yeah. And like kids in danger. Or even like parents in danger that are going to leave the kids alone, like bird, bird box or bird. Was bird box. Yeah. There? Messed me up because of the kids. Because mm -hmm. it was just like, especially when on a boat, they're all blindfolded. You're just like, oh my God, what is going to happen? Even if you die, like these kids are just blindfolded in the woods. And like, that was that was hard because she was so detached from them. She called yeah. them boy and girl. And like she was willing to sacrifice one to open her eyes to find where you get off the river or whatever. And like, then that didn't happen. I was like, Oh my God, is she really going to do this? Holy shit. Yeah. That was, that was, that was an interesting horror movie. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I got a question for you. What's up? Our favorite father brackets, Christmas close brackets figure, Kurt Russell. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, when they're throwing the stupid little Astro Ball, how'd you feel about that? All right, they—it's like a hokey version of like Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams, and it I, was super hokey. I was like, this is not landing for anyone, and if it is, yeah. they're an idiot. <laughs> because it, because the line of like, I never played. Uh, but here's the thing. It didn't land because they were doing it because it wasn't genuine because you didn't treat it genuine because like he was like an off color. Like it's not like I ever played catch with my dad or anything. Mm. And then like all of a sudden they're playing catch. But at the end of that movie with Yondu. Yeah. He was like, you know, you know, I may not be your father, but you know, I'm your daddy. Like, you know, like you would think something like that doesn't land. Yeah, but it does. But it does, and it's. But also with Yondu, like so, you know, superhero movies aren't really my thing. I, yeah. I watch them sort of sporadically or whatever, and I kind of, I kind of despise them. But when Yondu gets his send off at the end of that, that really got me. So it's, it's like reverence gets me, like due respect gets me, and all obviously the parental stuff that we've been talking about and the, and the self sacrifice and stuff like that. But yeah, when Yondu gets his send off there at the end, and everyone shows up. I was crying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
and they did it so well, especially by bringing in those other original guardians and you had Stallone there and stuff. And so like they did such a sweet job with it. Like James Gunn's such a good filmmaker. He really yeah. is like, because he can, he can make campy look awesome, mm-hmm. but he can also make heartfelt. You, you can make these blue characters, you know, that are in space that, you know, don't, you would never seem to care about feel heartfelt. That, that whistle an arrow around like what the fuck, that. Is, what the fuck is that <laughs> it's so weird but they explain it off with like that implant in his head and you're like all right i dig it i'm in yeah and Whatever then he works. leaves it leaves it to you know james gunn's real brother he leaves it to that guy <laughs> whatever his name is and i want to talk to you oh, about wow. uh the wb fallout what what if what are your thoughts now about legendary and what these big directors have had to say about the day and date for a month of of the wb lineup for the next uh, 12 months i think it's i think it's still bullshit i think it's still because you're screwing over so many people now and what are you really getting out of it are you getting subscribers to your thing and is that going to correlate with the money that needs to be made like okay now you don't have maybe you don't have to pay uh your actors the the, the bonuses act, and stuff, yeah, the target the bonuses. uh which is just you might not have to do it anyway because just how theaters are going and the vaccine is and not everybody's going to have it until like mid fall next year, you know? So we're all kind of like in, in a crazy place, but it may all be up in the air, but it's like, it seemed really premature to do that or, or even to do it on the same day release and not give theaters a chance and not tell anybody, any of your actors, any of your filmmakers, yeah. And just kind of like this is what we're doing now. It, it just it bugged me, and uh, and to but to learn that theaters now are like we want eighty percent of the box office then, and we're going to sell tickets at three to five dollars. I'm all for it. Good for you. And I think I that's what it should be. I hadn't heard that. So is that like a across the board a, a NATO promise or something? I don't know if it, I don't want to say it was NATO, and then it wasn't. Then, but like right. the, most theaters did come out and say like this is what we want to do. Like it and take it or leave it. Well, obviously Warner Brothers doesn't give a shit, so they'll they'll leave it. They won't. Yeah, they're not going to give up eighty percent of the box office for a lower ticket price. They're just not going to. They won't do it. So, yeah. I think I think it again was a ploy to get these movies seen, get them out because they're just backing up and costing them money. And I don't know what kind of margins they operate on and stuff like that. They got to be some of the most complex entertainment contracts in the entertainment industry i would assume but what you what's going to happen and i've done this myself i i'll subscribe to something for a a seven-day trial or a 30-day trial or in the case of quibi a 90-day trial watch what i want to watch and then never pay them a dime you know what i mean so sure they're going to get this spike of subscribers but it's going to fall off might not fall off 100 percent, but it's not going to be sustainable uh in my opinion and then you've got the blowback of what you've done to these directors and these actors and these producers, you think they're going to come back and make movies with you again? Knowing, knowing that this could happen again or, or that it did happen and you weren't considerate enough to even discuss it with us or anything like that. I, I, it's, it's going to bite them. It's going to bite them hard. I think I would I would like to believe that, but I just, I do not feel that filmmakers like directors and actors stand on principle enough to completely boycott to like let them like because what's her name gal gadot may be annoyed she's not going to get her bonus but she's not leaving wonder woman she got, really doesn't have anything else going on you know and yeah there's other stars that like i just i don't see them leaving the potential of other stuff that they could do and money they can make directors as well i think where it's really going to hurt them is production companies okay like legendary things like legendary i think is going to be the one like no We'll go off and do our own. We'll make a deal with Netflix or something like that. Right. And then, yeah, it may still end up streaming, but Netflix will still back their movies coming out in theaters mm-hmm. and they won't do it same day. So, you know, because Netflix has proven that they'll be like, no, we'll put it in theaters first. Yeah. Uh, well, well I, I think it was really interesting. Uh, you know, Timothy Chalamet wore the legendary shirt on Saturday Night Live, said, I stand with legendary. Christopher Nolan had plenty to say about it. He really did. He's one of me not come back. <laughs> yeah. He's you know, yeah. And, you know, those contracts, again, no idea how they're written and stuff like that. But some people like, you know, the uh, Gal Gadot 
she's probably contracted to make who knows how many movies with Warner Brothers. So she's going to, you know, in some regard, have to do that, you know, whether that's under duress or not, you know. She's going to be fine regardless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. I, I think it is going to bite them. I think people will be reluctant to work with Warner Brothers after this. They're going to have to. They're going to have to make amends somehow, and I don't know how that would be. Yeah, I think the biggest blowback has to come from us. Yeah, like the, the consumer of the movie. Even I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm still going to watch it. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you and I are going to go watch it in the theater. You know? Yeah, but we're. Because we're good people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> say that again. What'd you, I'm sorry. What'd you say? My monitors clicked out for a second. Because we're good people. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah we are. And that's a challenge to anybody listening. Go watch it in the theaters. You know, it, 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 we're ones that are fortunate enough right now with the theaters that are open by us that we can go see it in theaters. But I mean, there's a lot of people all over who aren't able to and they want to watch the movie. And then you have again, to kind of bring it back full circle, you have all the podcasters and movie reviewers and things like that who are like, this is ridiculous and this stinks and this sucks. And like, I think it stinks. I think it sucks, but I'm telling you right now, I got, if I want to survive doing movie podcasts and things like that, I got to see the movie and I'm going to a yeah, lot of them are, extent, yeah. you know, but I'm going to go see it in theaters, you know, to support the theaters. How many of those other podcasters are going to be like, I'll just check it out on HBO Max? Well, the, you know, the convenience of it all is a factor. Mm -hmm. So that's that's undeniable. I mean, just look at all the – like we, we we cut the cord in my house to save money on the cable bill, right? <laughs> and, and and this comes up like every third show or whatever, but I've got Netflix. i got Prime. I've got Hulu. I don't have Disney+. Plus. Uh, I have HBO Max because it's part of the – uh, internet package or whatever. So I have HBO max and then there's all the free stuff, all the tubies, all the voodoos, you know, and all that other stuff. I don't know if voodoo is free or not, but As some things are. Yeah. Yeah. Pluto, you know, there's just, there's just hundreds of these platforms and yeah. Oh, boo hoo. You have to watch a commercial for some of them. You're watching HD content in a lot of cases or 4k content with commercial. And I used to hate commercials, but now I find myself stuck on the couch because I'm lazy and I'm, en I'm engrossed in the new Perry Mason series on HBO or whatever, because it's gorgeous to look at and the yeah. stories are pretty good. And I'm like, I've been sitting here for four hours. Well, you are such I, a, oh, I got I got to pee. I got to pee. I got to mow the grass. I got to walk that dogs. Everything you get, you go down the rabbit hole and so much. And then you, you text me links and then, <laughs> Three hours later, I'm like, you son of a bitch, man. Yeah. I'm well, in know, this you, rabbit hole with you. You got to share the misery. Therapy, and I watched, I watched No Bullshit. That was the rest of the day. Oh, cinema therapy is great, isn't it? It is so good, man. It's so good. You know, I, listen, I, I, you know, if you're a podcaster or movie video guy or whatever, I, I will push. If I like your content, I'll push it. The Craftsman, which I still watch all the time. <laughs> Uh, cinema therapy. There's a few things you sent me that I just like, they're a part of my queue now. And that's what I watch. Yeah. And, and it's funny because you say commercials, I mean, we're at that age where like commercials shouldn't bother us. In fact, when they stopped having commercials for that short period of time, it was nice for us. Cause we're like, Oh, all right. But I think going right back was no big deal because we grew up with commercials. Yeah. And I still watch TV, so it doesn't bother me. I watch sports and stuff. So like the commercials are just a thing. Commercials still bug me, uh, like depending on what you're watching or whatever. And yeah. like, a, you know, target audience is a man of a certain age or whatever. So it's all this, you know, erectile dysfunction medication <laughs> or, or Rolex, yeah. Rolex watch commercials. I was like, I, 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 I have a problem. I can't afford that Rolex. I don't have that problem. Stop showing me that, you know, or the what was the one like it showed the couples in the separate bathtubs or whatever, like that was supposed to be romantic or something. Cialis maybe. I was like, stop showing me Pecker commercials, man. <laughs> I see that's what you need though. You got to afford the Rolex. You got to become a gentleman of the night. So you might as well use the Cialis to get you through. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, the scene snobs isn't working. I've got to go become a gentleman of the night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, it's so crazy to me. 
yeah, everything that they have. Like the commercials don't bother me. They are becoming a little much, especially on YouTube. But <sighs> oh, I, so when I'm watching YouTube, it doesn't matter what it is. My remote never leaves my hand because you have to watch that first seven second ad, but then the second one you can skip after five seconds. And it's just like bloop. And, so and much. I've fallen asleep. And like the continuous play will happen, you know, so the ads play to completion and and then the videos play. And then you end up like it does this like sort of topic creep like Pandora. If you put on Punk Rock Christmas two hours later, you're like in in like traditional country Christmas or something like that. It's, it's like subject creep. And YouTube does the same thing because you're not correcting it. You're not interacting with it. It's not, you know, it's like I need a remote built in. I need to be a cyborg basically to keep my YouTube where I want it. Cause otherwise, you know, I, I get these ads that don't apply because I didn't stop them when they played the first time. Cause I was asleep. And then this other content shows up and I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> you know what? Let me ask you because you're going to know, and it's been driving me crazy this season. I need to know. I have Pandora. I got Amazon music, all that stuff. Um, but I guess Pandora is probably the best bet. What station do I have to listen to to hear like those good '80s Christmas songs that we used to hear on the radio all the time, like uh, "Santa Claus Coming to Town" by um, by um, Bro Live? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not Bro Live. That's on all the time. Um, that's on Christmas traditional all the time. Things like uh, uh, um, uh, "Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time" or just yeah. All- so it's it's probably intermixed in like um, pop Christmas or something like that. But you, right. but with that, you're also going to get all the R and B, Mariah Carey type, you know, all the, the whatever you call that kind of singing. I wonder if I skip them then, if it will be. Well, uh, so I haven't used Pandora in a long time because I use Apple Music now. But I uh, used to, you know, like thumbs up stuff or whatever, and then you could listen to thumbs up radio. Mm, that's true. Um, so everything that you liked would happen but i mean that's a lot of work to <laughs> go build a playlist that's going to play for on and on and i think it would make suggestions as well or like stations even mm-hmm. so if you punch in the song that you like say simply having a wonderful christmas time by the beatles and do like create station i'm sorry you said who did you say that was by i said the beatles it's paul yeah, mccartney yeah. It's, it's uh it's paul mccartney and the greatest band of all time um I will not say that word. <laughs> My favorite place to get a beach towel when I'm at the coast, wings. <laughs> I did say the Beatles, didn't I? God, I'm an asshole. <laughs> I figured you said it because I knew you didn't want to say wings. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's as much as I, I dislike wings, uh, I, I dislike more being incorrect. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I think we're going off on a tangent here. But uh, I am going I think to try. The whole show was a tangent. <laughs> the whole show was a tangent. But hey, listen, we, we covered a lot of stuff. Oh, no, we have to finish on one thing because what? it's topical. What? We watched some fun <laughs> stuff the other day. You've, you've joined a group, a very, very prestigious. The elite. <laughs> the elite. Um, and because I, I watched the bloopers on yours, I got to sit down and watch the movie that you were in. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going <laughs> to give it away. I promise. You can give. Mine away, that's not a big deal because people know it's the worst movie ever made. What did you think of my first movie? It looked like a first movie made with buddies, is what it looked like. <laughs> Three bro show. <laughs> and when it when it popped up with the uh production title in the Disney font, I was like, You assholes. <laughs> I'm so glad that that was your response. You have no idea. Because it gets so loud and obnoxious in THX, and I can tell you, I'm never going to let you watch the behind the scenes that's longer than the movie. (laughs) (laughs) So pretentious. Oh, shit. On such a crazy level. For the the DVD extras. (laughs) You could probably find it, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to tell you right out where to get it. It's so pretentious. Everything about it is completely pretentious. No, um, but you know what? It's it's you're you, I'm me. The movies that we made and were in are bad. That's just the fact of it. <laughs> and we recognize God. that. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell you a quick story about the the one I was in though. Um, so this guy said, Hey, we want to use your bookstore for a scene in the movie. Is that cool? And I said, absolutely. This is like 20, 
team, <laughs> maybe. And uh, he goes, "Hey, we need a we need a Dave. We need a character. Do you want to be Dave?" I'm like, "Sure." You know, so short film, horror film, last minute casting of me, like on a whim. Like, there's not going to be any lines, right? I had like seven pages of dialogue. I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> So he sends me the script and I was like, dude, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I thought I was just going to get like axed or something early on. And he goes, oh, no, Dave's like the main character aside from the protagonist. You know, and I was like, oh, God. All right, fine. I'll do it. I'll do it for the experience. Right. Oh, my God. It was so bad. I my acting is doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Period. I, love it. I will say this, though, that, that cracks me up about what I saw and what I'm hearing now is. They came to you and said, hey, we need a Dave. And you find out it's a main character in the movie. And it's like, what do you mean you need a main character and you're getting ready to shoot? <laughs> like, what is this? What are you making? <laughs> um, at least we went through like four days of casting for Second Grade of Love. And that's what we got. Yeah. That's yeah. what we got. Well, I think he was going to be Dave himself because he wasn't shooting it. He was he was directing it. Uh, okay. uh, the guy that wrote it. So he had a, a, a DP uh with him and i guess he was just going to be dave but he didn't he didn't want to do it and he's like oh maybe maybe this sucker will do it (laughs) (laughs) he was right he was right i even did i was considering doing a video a vlog at the time and uh so i was like turned on my samsung tablet and i'm like recording myself and i'm like all right i I got the script here we go i'm opening it now and then it's like there's a video that i took of myself going what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i gotta call this guy <laughs> that's amazing um god that's so funny uh yeah so i was glad i got to see the the bloopers at least so far and i will be watching the movie i'm sorry you had to watch them great of love uh lots of people want to but it ain't gonna happen yeah. um I was like, don't treat it. And, and the people who want to watch it treat it like it's the room. And I'm like, no, it's just bad. It's not funny, <laughs> bad. It's just bad. Although anybody who has seen it, it took like nine takes for him to say, I love her. And he still didn't do it right. When he's like, I love her. <laughs> and that's the way he keeps saying it. And we kept just being like, what are you doing? I love her. Just, just, I love her. And like, you know, he was gay and, uh, we talked to him about it at the time. We're just like, listen, we don't care. But it's like saying I love him versus I love her. Why is this so weird? Think of, uh, think you of your mom. How about that? Think of your mom. You love your mom, right? Say exactly. I love her. Exactly. Like, you know, it's like, why is this so different? Because he would get it right on when well, not on camera, but then he'd be like, I love her. And we're <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? And we just kept going over and over again. And then finally, we're like, we'll just use it. We'll use one of them, whatever. Yeah, got nine to choose from. Keep the camera rolling, right? He was a good guy, though. Chris Nice. What camera did you guys use for that? I don't know. Handycam? Like a, yeah, I was about to say a camcorder or something. Yeah. A little high eight handycam. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have much back then. It was kind of like whatever we can get our hands on. Yeah, we did have a boom mic. But you were doing it. You were doing it. You know, how many people talk about it and never do it? That's fair. That is fair. I think all of the equipment was mine, too. I think it was just stuff I had from like when we would run around and like Lenny and I would run around in a video store and film like weird horror movies. Um, or we would, it would snow and we'd be at the video store because we didn't have anything better to do. And we would take road flares and run around in the parking lot and I would just film him like it was the thing. Yeah. Oh my doing- God. The show's never going to end. I watched The Thing from 2011 last night. Oh boy. I think. Which things? So, so here's what I think. CGI debacle aside, because it is a CGI debacle, like on par with the Scorpion King. It's okay. t- it's terrible. If they would have used better CGI or practical props, that would have been a great movie. So I I, I think not, well, maybe not great. It would have been a good movie though. I liked it. I liked every part of it as as a horror movie going in knowing that the CGI was a fucking problem. I liked it. Yeah, it really was a problem too, because on so many levels, you got you got what was so charming about the original so wrong for the for the remake. Yeah, 
like you thought it was the characters and like the characters were part of it but that the practical effects of the thing are what everybody that's what first. that's what makes it stand out but i thought they did a good job building the distrust immediately like as soon as she realized that there was replication going on and stuff like that they mm-hmm. and, the, and she finds the fillings on the floor or whatever like the the distrust immediately happened and you got two groups and then you've got the the third group the americans that survived a crash somehow which they never address <laughs> they just say well that's unlikely you must be monsters yeah so i mean the movie had problems obviously but seriously cgi aside it's not a bad horror movie if you go check out because they wanted to do practical if you check I out like, oh you have checked that actually i think you're the one that sent it to me I'd, I'd, i've seen it i know what you're talking about yeah and they um, were they, they were so disappointed that the studio did that yeah well welcome to studios yeah exactly. what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> but yeah that with that with that on that note let's not complain about the studios anymore we there are overlords who are giving us all the great content <laughs> <laughs> wait for you to if there would be a virtual punch right now if there could be yeah. but um just for joking but uh yeah with that being said this has been pulling focus i am mick manhattan and of course i'm joined with i'm brian patrick I always like to leave you hanging there for a second if I can. It's always fun. I, we're going to have to mix it up at some point. Like maybe I'll do the intro one time and you can do the outro or something. By all means, please do. You've been listening to Polling Focus with Brian Patrick and Mick Manhattan. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Skyline Indie Film FE and at The Scenes Knob. Please rate and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.